Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News, and I wanted to bring you a couple things in this video. <clears throat> um, okay, so this is an interesting article, I suppose. This is from October 24th, 2019. These UN climate scientists think they can halt global warming for $300 billion. Here's how. Or if you can read it a different way. These UN climate scientists think they can halt global warming for $300 billion. Anyways, whatever. I think I messed that one up. Uh, $300 billion, That's the money needed to stop the rise in greenhouse gases and buy up to 20 years of time to fix global warming, according to the United Nations climate scientists. It's the gross domestic product of Chile or the world's military spending every six days. 60 days, excuse me. 60 days, six days. A lot of military spending going on. The sum is not to fund green technologies or finance a moonshot solution to emissions, but to use simple age-old practices to lock millions of tons of carbon back into an overlooked and overexploited resource, the soil. We have lost the biological function of soils. We have got to reverse that, said Baron J. Orr, <coughs> lead scientist for the UN Convention to Combat Desertification. If we do it, we are turning the land into a big part of the solution for climate change. Rene Castro Salazar, an assistant director general at the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, said that of the 2 billion hectares, hectares, almost 5 billion acres, of land around the world that has been degraded by misuse, overgrazing, deforestation, and other largely human factors, 900 million hectares could be restored. Returning that land to pasture... Food crops or trees would convert enough carbon into biomass to stabilize emissions of CO2. That is a hefty claim. Um, and I'm wondering where, I mean, these are scientists that are, are claiming this. So, <clears throat> uh, stabilize emissions of CO2, the biggest greenhouse gas for 15 to 20 years giving the world time to adopt carbon-neutral technologies. With political will and investment of about $300 billion, it is doable, Castro Salazar said. We would be using the least cost options we have while waiting for the technologies in energy and transportation to mature and to be fully available in the market. It will stabilize the atmospheric changes, the fight against climate change for 15 to 20 years. We very much need that. The heart of the idea is to tackle the growing problem of desertification, the degradation of dry land to the point where it can support little life. At least a third of the world's land has been degraded to some extent directly affecting the lives of 2 billion people, said Eduardo Mansur, director of the Land and Water Division at the FAO. Marginal lands are being stressed around the globe by the twin phenomena of accelerated climate change and a rate of population growth that could lift the global tally to almost 10 billion people by 2050. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they touched on the subject of population. Much of that growth is in areas such as sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, where land is already highly stressed. Uh, the idea is to put more carbon into the soil. That's not going to be a simple thing because of the natural conditions. But keeping the carbon in the soil and getting that natural vegetation, grazing land, etc., thriving again, that's the key. <clears throat> key to returning dry lands to vegetation is, to use, is the use of fertilizer, said Mansour. Fertilizers are essential for increasing productivity. Good fer fertilizer in the right quantity is very good for the soil. But decades of poor agricultural practices in both rich and poor nations have resulted in misuse either from using the wrong products, using too much fertilizer, and some areas using too little so that the soil loses its nutrients. The problem, unfortunately, is big and it is growing, said Mansour. The main cause of emissions from agriculture is poor land management. But the solutions are known. Sustainable land management, sustainable water management, management, sustainable soil management. So, you know, on the whole, this is a good idea and a good, good effort. I think um, one of the more sane 
solutions or you know possible means of action that we might have. Um, you know, it's leaving out a lot of other factors, right? You know, what about the degradation of oceans? And what about that pesky population growth? Um, I, you know, I'm all, I'm all for it. I'm all, you know, I think obviously, and everybody kind of understands that now this is, you know, growing, starting to become common knowledge that the, you know, the, the way forward is to rewild, um, to restore, um, ecological areas. Um, and you know, there's been studies out of, you know, further, um, insect loss and further, you know, animal loss. Um, we're, we're still losing species and numbers of animals and insects hand over fist. And, you know, a lot of it is due to the degradation of natural habitats, wild habitats. So we need to restore those habitats and, we need to, you know, human, humans need to vacate the premises and go, you know, over here somewhere. And um, m- many, many believe that less humans would be really helpful in this endeavor. And I'm, I'm one of those. I think that we should be talking about reducing the population of the planet because that is, you know, it's not the one driver. It's, it's a huge driver. Um, Obviously, some populations use more energy and resources than other populations. But on the whole, the more people, the more resources, the, you know, the more land, food, water you need. Um, and all of those things are in short supply. And we are using up, you know, one and a half Earths every single year of resources. And we're not replenishing those resources. And one of the main reasons that's happening is because overpopulation. Um and also, you know, over exploitation, I think, you know, would be fair to say that too. Those two things need to go down considerably. So how do we, you know, it'd be awesome if the UN could put forth some kind of study about <clears throat> how we're going to lower our consumption and lower our population at the same time, um, being a way to halt global warming and Guess those things don't cost any money. I mean, possibly education. Um, but, you know, telling the truth is free. Um, dealing with the truth is free. Accepting the truth is free. <laughs> Acting on the truth, it might even be free too. Uh, let's see, where are we? Oh, one more, one more video, one more thing I want to cover in this video. Um, this is the latest or one of the latest, yeah, the latest just have a think video talking about the revolutionary new lithium ion battery technology, zero to 200. So they they've developed this process where they can charge a battery, um, in like 10 minutes and they're hoping to reduce it to five, you know? And so this is, you know, on one level, good news for the electric car industry on other, you know, on another level, probably bad news for the environment. And so, um, because again, you know, all of these, the cars and the batteries take resources and we don't have enough resources to build, to replace all the cars on the road, on the planet with electric cars. We just don't. And we don't have the resources, you know, that's just, it's, you know, encouraging ongoing technological uh, resource depletion. And, um, you know, this is, for all intents and purposes, a, a techno fix or, you know, some kind of like techno hopium. Um, you know, it's cool that they can do this. You know, I'll, I'll admit this is really very cool. Again, why aren't scientists working on, you know, what? Why aren't they working on a, an amazing new technology to help people understand that having too many babies is a bad thing or that using, using too much stuff is a bad thing. Buying too many things is a bad thing. Um, having three cars instead of one is a bad thing or buying a new car all, you know, every three years is a bad thing. Um, going on, you know, vacations willy nilly whenever you feel like it, bad thing. So that, you know, I would love for that technological 
um, advancement to happen really soon. You know, I hope scientists are working day and night in a laboratory somewhere to, to you know, work on this amazing magic box, which will penetrate people's minds and get them to go like, oh, you know, if we don't want to kill ourselves, that means we, we shouldn't kill the earth. We shouldn't destroy the planet um, because we want to have, we want to drive an electric car or we want to do this really cool new thing or we want to have, you know, all these gadgets or, you know, um, or we want to have five kids, you know. I, everybody has children, I know. I have children too. So, you know, I'm not not blaming or shaming anybody that has children and, you know, not looking to be blamed or shamed myself. I'm just saying going forward, and this has to be implemented at a, at a, um, you know, at a governmental level, at a, at a societal organization, you know, um, because nobody can even have this discussion. And that's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. And if, you know, if the discussion brings out the, oh my God, they're, you know, genocide, they're talking about, oh, well, um, eugenics, you know, whatever. No, stop, stop it. (laughs) Stop, stop. Uh, That's not what people are talking about. In in regards to climate change, there's, it's just a direct correlation of population to habitat destruction. That's a direct correlation. It's just, you know, more people equals less animals and plants and green things and water and things that we need for the whole, the entire system of the planet to survive. So we, you know, and nature does that itself. So, you know, nature will impose balance all on its own. And it's going to impose balance on us if you don't, if you can't understand that concept. So, um, if we cannot impose balance on ourselves, it will be done for us. So if you cannot have the conversation, um, you are part of the problem. So, um, I don't know. Anyways, hopefully scientists are working on this amazing new technology to convince people to let, you know, amazing new technology that, that makes, uh, news reporters tell the truth or, you know, allows people to have conversations around really difficult issues, uh, you know, without, you know, spazzing, ah, no, there's it's genocide and eugenics. Oh my God, they're talking about no, we're not. Nobody's talking about that. Talking about you know, really just understanding that it's a problem and how do we deal with it in a compassionate and you know fair way. Um, and also, you know, how how to elucidate to people that you know, obviously, people in first world countries use many more resources than people in third world countries do that you know that doesn't mean that it's you know one problem or the other it's kind of like we're all on this ship together and so probably probably the best way to do it would be to um as one everyone as one take this problem seriously and and take it on in a in a meaningful way that's all i have for you in this video thank you so much for your eyes your ears and your conscience if you would like to support this channel you can do so at the links below until next time peace